thunderstorms today. We're along with you every step of the way, tracking the storms here from Weather Command and with boots on the ground. Field meteorologist Brett Adair joins us now. He's on the phone from uh, Ruston, Louisiana. He'll be following these storms this evening, well beyond sunset. Brett, what are you expecting later on tonight? I know a big piece of your storm tracking is positioning yourself in an area where you're expecting uh, that impactful weather to develop. Yeah, we wanted to position ourselves east of the front, obviously, just, uh, you know, east of Shreveport, really between Shreveport and Monroe right now here in the Ruston area. We are just outside of the initial tornado watch that was issued, but we believe that this area, as you mentioned, a little bit further to the east, even over in the Mississippi Delta region, could be in a more significant threat in the next couple of hours as we're already beginning to see some of those showers grow more vertical. Uh, down near Lufkin, Texas, south of Shreveport, that area ahead of the front, that can be a sign that we're starting to see some of that more discrete activity develop as those cloud tops begin to get colder and grow and they move toward the north and east. So we're expecting supercell-type thunderstorms to develop later this afternoon with the wind shear that is in place. And as the Storm Prediction Center has outlined, we do have a chance of very strong wind uh, large hail, possibly up to baseball size in some of these cellular storms, and then also strong to longer track type tornadoes as we go through the evening. Yeah, I completely uh, agree, Brett. And it's a little bit unsettling when you consider that, as you mentioned, there's a tornado watch off to your west. You're not currently under one yet, but you're sitting in a position that's likely even more favorable for those severe storms in the areas back to the west where the tornado watch has already been issued. The issue here is once we move on through this evening, we lose daylight. I know that's a huge component for you storm chasing. You start to rely on things like lightning flashes. What's that like transitioning into the nocturnal setup when you're out tracking these storms? Well, it's very challenging. That's one reason where you'd like to stay near a pretty well-maintained highway or interstate system as well as you know, unfortunately, some of the bigger cities that might be in the path because we do rely on light pollution, power flashes, you know, unfortunately, things that it can hit to give us visual clues if we have something on the ground. Now, I will say this. We've got several hours potentially of daylight-type tornadic storms coming. I think we may start rolling around 4 o'clock, 4.30 Central Time with those type of storms. So we've still got a three- to four-hour window of daylight activity where we can get you some of those visuals in before we go into the overnight. And that's going to be very vital today because this is not going to stop when the sun sets. This can go long hours into the night. And as we both know, the killers happen in the south at night because you said you can't see them. You just need to heed all of those warnings today because we are in a particularly dangerous set up this afternoon. Yeah, and like you said, we're in late March now. The days are longer, the sun angle is higher, and that's helping to add more energy and instability to this overall setup. You've got a unique perspective on this as a field meteorologist because of just that, all the time you've spent out in pursuit of these storms. What are your thoughts related to what we've seen over the past few months? Yes, we're into uh, the beginning of what we would consider proper springtime severe weather season, but over the last few months, we've seen a lot of activity that looks an awful lot like springtime. Because of that, you've got a lot of these areas with saturated ground, weakened tree systems. Is there a cumulative effect here that you're concerned about with this now potent storm system unfolding over the next several hours? Oh, absolutely. You know, we've been in a very active pattern across this region, really dating all the way back to November of 2022. So this is nothing new. It seems like every week or every two weeks we've dealt with a severe weather threat and the possibility of some tornadic activity. Matter of fact, just a couple of weeks ago, we had a tornado go right through Shreveport. So, you know, everyone here is familiar. And uh, here's the thing, guys. we got a couple of months of this left because, again, we're just entering what we would go is our peak severe weather season in this area, March, April, May. So we need to get through this together. And, you know, again, this is the time of the year where we see those more damaging, destructive tornadoes just simply because we have more energy available for them to feed on.
Yeah, this is the time to really dig in and, and stay weather aware as we move on through the next couple of months. And that starts this evening with a very active setup. Field meteorologist Brett Adair, thanks for being with us. I know an active evening for you ahead.